In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, Super excited about the guest I've got on with us here today. It's going to be a fantastic conversation. Uh, the amount of wisdom, the amount of experience that he comes from in the entrepreneurial world, sales, marketing, uh, just connecting with humans is going to be super powerful. And I think you're going to find a lot of wisdom here in the discussion we're about ready to have. We've got a discussion here with Nikki Ballou today here with us. He's coming to us from Toronto, Canada, which is super cool. Across the border here for us. Nikki is an international best-selling author of 10 published books, two of them being New York Times bestsellers, and the host of two podcasts, the Thought Leader Revolution podcast and the Sovereign Man podcast. He's also the founder of the E-Circle Academy, which we'll get into exactly what that is here in a little bit, where he runs a year-long mastermind and education program working with coaches consultants, corporate trainers, and other service-based businesses. Nikki is super passionate about helping entrepreneurs win big in the marketplace and also helping people make the difference they were born to make, which is super cool. Just the inspiration part of even just that last sentence is super cool, which is why I'm super excited about having this conversation with you today, Nikki. So first off, man, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Randy. Great to be here, brother. Yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. So went through a lot of the high level bullet point list of a little bit about you. Would love for you to share a little bit more about the, your story, where you've been, kind of where you are now and uh, where you're headed. Thank you for that. Well, I'm originally an immigrant from the Middle East. I'm a Christian from Iran. When I was 11 years old, the Islamic revolution took place in Iran and my late father, God rest his soul. He could see the writing on the wall. He and my mom could see this wasn't going to be a great place to raise a Christian family. So they made a plan. And it took them a while to execute it, but eventually they got my brothers and I out of Iran. We went to Greece for a couple of years, and then eventually we landed where I live now in Toronto, Canada. Now, at the time, I was a kid. I didn't want to leave my home. I didn't want to leave my friends. But in retrospect, this was the single greatest thing my mom and dad could have done for me and my two brothers. They took us from a legacy of tyranny, and they brought us to a legacy of freedom. I believe inside every human breast beats the living heart of freedom. Every man, every woman on this planet wants to chart their own path, wants to pick the direction that they go for themselves. And it's why I believe it takes an immigrant from a tyrannical country to show those, the freeborn in America and in the West, how great they have it and how important it is for them to stand up for those freedoms. And you shouldn't let America descend into some tin pot dictatorship where your political opponents are wantonly jailed just because the people in power are afraid of losing it. That should never be allowed to stick in America. And I wanted to say that for the record. Now, my dad, he was an entrepreneur. If you met him, Randy, you'd love my dad. My dad was the kind of man that if you were looking for work, he'd sit you down in his office and he would call all his entrepreneur buddies and he'd cajole them, he'd manipulate them, he'd browbeat them until one of them hired you. If you were trying to start a business, he'd sit with you and help you plan it, help you come up with access to capital, even even get you a couple clients just to get you going. And if you were a friend of his and you were looking to buy a car or a house and you didn't have quite enough money, he would top you up with a loan that he'd never let you pay back. And people always go to me, Nikki, what are you talking about, man? This sounds like some mythical dude out of a movie, right? Like, it's a wonderful life. You know, that kind of guy, George Bailey. And like, no, man, this isn't a mythical person. They go, come on, who does that, man? Well, the late, great Napoleon Ballou for one. Why would he do such a thing? Well, first of all, he was a devout Christian. He believed he'd been blessed by God and his Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And it was his duty to share those blessings with other people. But secondly, he did it because he could. He was successful. He was rich. I wanted to be a man like my father. I wanted to be someone people looked up to. I wanted to be someone who did things for people. And that's why I became an entrepreneur. I got into the business of helping other entrepreneurs because I believe entrepreneurs are society's greatest heroes. Outside of the folks in the military who fight, bleed, and die so the rest of us can stay free, these are the greatest people of all because they've got the courage to dream and go after their dream with everything in their heart and soul. So that's what I did. I got into the business of serving entrepreneurs. and. 
I remember my father telling me when I was a kid, son, remember life, it's about people, first and foremost. I'm like, okay, then. Business is about people, first and foremost. I said, Dad, what are you talking about? This is about money. He says, no, 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 son. It's about people. I said, what are you talking about? Without money, you can't do no business. Dad said, that's true. But without people, there's no need to do business. Because what is business? It's about solving problems for people for profit. You solve acute problems for amazing people. You make an awesome profit. That is the awe-inspiring purpose of business. Wow. When I got this in my heart and soul, I realized what my mission, what my purpose was. And my father, he was a man who believed in people. He'd always tell me, son, that man in front of you, that's someone's son, that's someone's husband, that's someone's brother, that's someone's father. That's a hero to somebody. That's somebody that other people count on and depend on. They've got hopes, dreams, fears, aspirations. They've had highs, they've had lows. Maybe they've even been let down by someone just like you. And it's your job, your job to restore their faith in humanity. My father believed in people. He loved on people. And that's what he taught me. I believe every human being needs someone to believe in them, someone to love on them. Someone to light that spark of self-belief and take that tiny little spark and through constant belief in that person turn it into a roaring fire so they never look back and if you ask me nikki who are you man what are you all about i got all these credentials sure i graduated from georgetown magna cum laude with a master's degree i've written 10 books two new york times bestsellers i've done over 700 episodes of my own podcast i've done well over 600 episodes on other people's shows you know what are those things, the things that define me? No, man, the things that defines me more than anything else is I'm a professional believer in people. And I think that's what the world needs right now. So let's go a little bit deeper into that service piece, because I think sometimes people get entrepreneurship, capitalism kind of confused with, like you said, the thought of that it's all about the money. It's all about getting money versus flipping that on that you're really giving service. You're providing service, solving problems for other human beings. Like, like you said, it's all about people. I love how you said that. It's it's people helping people versus people trying to take from other people, which that's that's I love how you phrased that. I would love for you to kind of take that just even a little bit deeper about the importance. Maybe help somebody that's out there thinking, well, no, I I, I want to go to business because I want to make money. Well, that's a that's a byproduct of solving the problem for that other individual and just how important it is focusing on that people portion first. I tell you, the people that are the most fulfilled in life are those that have the highest morals and ethics and want to make a difference for other people. God Almighty put us here to live, to love, to contribute. Live, love, contribute. He didn't put us here to become a glutton and just take care of ourselves. He didn't create a me first world. He just didn't. And if you want to live a life you can be proud of, a life that you're going to enjoy living, it's got to include making a difference for your fellow man. It's just got to. Because you think about this. The whole reason why a lot of good people, you know, are nervous about business is because they don't want to be one of those people, those pushy, slimy, commission breath spewing salespeople that don't care about you and just want to. Get their hand in your wallet. And that's not what it's all about, man. You know, and I, and, I, and I know so many good people, right? Because their ethics are high and their sales skills are non-existent, they don't make money. You, you know, nobody wants to be sold. Randy, you don't want to be sold. I don't want to be sold. But everybody wants to be served by a caring human being. Mm -hmm. So I help people reframe sales to service. I had a client. Okay. This client, this man, he was a former executive vice president of a manufacturing company. And he got burned out doing that. He worked 60 hours a week and he quit. He became an executive coach. Problem was his income dropped 80%. So when he came to see me, he said, man, I need, I need to do more. And, you know, he was focusing on that. 
And I said, man, you need to stop thinking about making more money. You need to start thinking about helping more people. That simple reframe took him from 70000 a year to $500,000 a year. That plus showing him how to narrow his niche. <laughs> he just, he, he briefly went to a million a year, but he was working too hard. So he dropped back down to half a million a year. That's half a million, million a year. To, to made, dial it in, dial it back, right? Once you have it dialed yeah. in. He was making half a million a year working 25 hours a week. He didn't want to work 50 hours a week for a million. God Serving people. Him. God bless him. So talk about, so I'm envisioning the listener out there today. So they may be early stage entrepreneur or struggling to scale their business. And you made a mention here just a second ago as far as how you help this gentleman narrow his niche. Talk about somebody that has an idea, but they, they're thinking too broad, meaning they're trying to serve. I'm going to let you describe it. But as far as like how important it is to narrow down that niche, uh, to be able to drive the, and acquire and attract the right people into their business. It's a great question. So I had a young man um, who was introduced to me God, nine years ago. He was 25 at the time. And he was a personal fitness trainer. And he had seven clients. He made $1,200 a month. In Toronto, you can't even rent a corner of a room for that. <laughs> you know? So he came to me and he said, I need your help. I hear you do great work. I said, okay, sure. Tell me who you help because I can help anybody with any health problem. <laughs> Told him that's not going to work. He said, we need to narrow your focus. He goes, okay, okay, okay. All right, I got it. I'm going to go after doctors. Why doctors? Well, my dad's a doctor. I'm like, okay, that's great. Doctors also make a lot of money. I think I make a lot of money working with doctors. I'm like, wrong motivation, son. No, 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 I'm going to do it. Six months later, he got like two clients. I said, dude, we need to shift this. He's like, okay, okay. I got a cardiologist, cardiologist. I'm going to work with cardiologists. Why cardiologists? They make more money than doctors. I'm like, oh, dude, you are not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> he got zero cardiologist clients. But along the way, the good Lord sent him a man with a missing limb. Lost his leg in a childhood accident. He started training this guy. This guy was a Paralympian. He helped him win some medals at some major events. Then he came to me looking all sheepish. He said, Nikki, I feel very foolish. Why? You've been trying to tell me something. I haven't been listening. I said, that is true. I've been going after the money. And I, I, I got nothing from that. And it didn't even feel good. And I started working with this fellow. You know, interestingly enough, this fellow's last name was Wilson too. Mm. Papito Pappy Wilson. So Pappy Wilson there. Um, he said, I love working with Wilson. I want to work with more people with missing ones. I said to him, Danny, his name was Dan. That's a great idea. So you need to understand this dude had like seven clients. He was making $1,200 a month. As soon as he did this, in six weeks, Randy, he signed up 400 clients. Wow. Now, you understand he was a one-on-one -on -one personal trainer, right? By himself, no staff. Six weeks, 400 clients. That's insane. He went from making $1,200 a month to making over $100,000 a month. He had to change his whole business model because he couldn't do one-on-one -on -one coaching with 40 clients. Why did he win? First of all, he stopped being about the money. He started being about them. My dad always told me, take your attention off yourself and put your attention on that person. They are someone's father, someone's mother, someone's brother, someone's sister, someone's son, someone's daughter, someone's wife, someone's husband. So Dan did that. Now, what you need to understand is this was a good choice that he made to go after people with missing limbs because no other personal trainer or fitness coach wanted to have anything to do with anybody with a missing limb. Why? You ask. Well, Randy, it's because they have no arms and legs, so they can't work out, or at least that was the thought. But you see, Dan's message to these folks was you can do anything an able-bodied person can do. And I'm going to help you. 
Uh, put yourself in the shoes of an individual with one or more missing limbs. They probably don't feel good about having one or more missing limbs. They probably feel victimized. Unable to do everything others can do. What Dan did is he gave them dignity. He gave them belief. He believed in them. He poured into them. And he took that little spark of belief and he turned it into a roaring fire. And that's why he signed up so many clients. In a very short period of time. You said six weeks? Six weeks, yeah. And a lot of that, I'm sure it was probably word of mouth, was it not? So this marketing was probably even a Absolutely. lot Absolutely. He spent easier, over on marketing. Right? He spent I mean, people were just time. coming to him. It was all profit. It's all profit. Fantastic. Good for him. Good for those people he was helping. So once again, kind of going back to the original part of the conversation here today about serving others, showing up as service, finding a niche that is in need, a little unique, but at the same time, just serving it to the best of his ability. That's, that's a fantastic story. I love that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. So talk about how, so we're talking about a niche. So I think of skills, right? So if, if you're an entrepreneur, you're obviously trying to acquire skills that you can then offer either as services to different clients, potentially, right? Talk about being and gaining specific skills and the importance of that as well. So to me, it's almost like that's part of the niche as well. So if you can get really good at a specific things versus really good at a lot of things, if that makes any sense. So you can be the wizard behind the computer that can, can do all of this stuff on the computer. But you're, if you're the guy that can go in there and write the code, that's going to get the computer to do X, Y, Z, and how much more important that is even uh, when niching down and trying to find that specific client. So here's the deal. There's a lot of people that go into business with a great deal of life experience. And if you've gone through life for more than 30 years, you have developed some genius. You may be unaware of what that genius is. And part of thought leadership is helping you discover what that genius is. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So we had someone come into our program. She owned a bunch of pharmacies. And then she sold them. She got out of the business. She didn't know. She was too young to retire. And she didn't know what she wanted to do. And she, she knew that she wanted to help people. That, that much she knew. And, you know, she was a mother and she thought maybe she could help mothers. But you know what? The truth of the matter was she didn't know how or what exactly. Then after sitting with us for a while, she realized that she spent all this time in the pharmacy industry. She got out of the industry for a reason. She was burnt out. And she knew there was a lot of pharmacists who were burnt out. She thought, well, what if I put a program together that helps these people overcome their burnout? So she did that. Given that she had a background in the industry, she had some credibility. It, it took her a year to arrive at this decision, right? Because she tried all kinds of things from others, this and that. Zero new business in a year. But once she figured it out, in the first six weeks, she signed up $200,000 of business. Hmm. And how do you figure out what your specific skills are? Well, you come and you see someone like me and you do one of my programs and you go through a series of exercises that'll help you see what those skills are. Your skills aren't your job description. I'm going to repeat that. Your skills aren't your job description. Your skills are your life and your life experience. If you are a man who went through a divorce and then became a single father and ran a men's group, you've learned some skills. You've learned to deal with adversity. You've learned how to help people who are hurting. You've learned how to solve problems. All of this can come in very handy. You could become a business coach. You could become a fitness expert because both of those areas require someone with the ability to overcome adversity requires someone with the ability to push through the pain requires someone with the ability to solve problems and at the end of the day that's what everybody needs right so i had a client who was a owner of a naturopathic medicine practice 
we're going to call her Vicky. When Vicky came to see us, she was already successful. She's making six figures a year, but she wanted to make seven figures. See, her dad was dying of brain cancer. And she wanted to honor him by becoming successful because he was a successful business owner. Passed away a couple months later. And we sat with her. And she's like, well, how do I do this? How do I grow? And I said, well, who, who do you help? And again, she was like, anybody. Jesus, anybody. <laughs> Is that anybody again? <laughs> no, I ain't going to work. You can't help anybody. So we did an exercise. We did a Venn diagram. Who are the clients you've gotten the best results for? Who are the clients you've enjoyed working with the most? Who are the clients who are easiest to do business with, easiest to transact with? We figured out who that was for her, where all three intersected. There was a professional woman over the age of 45, successful business, successful marriage, successful career, but they no longer felt young and beautiful. They gained some weight. They, they didn't look or feel good. So we helped her come up with a program called Get Your Sexy Back. And lo and behold, she got a lot of clients. Get Your Sexy Back. She went from six figures a year to six figures a month within three years on the strength of getting clear on who her ideal client was and getting clear on how she could help them with her skill sets. It's a beautiful thing. Yes, it is. That's awesome. That's a great story. Thanks. So talk about belief and someone's belief in themselves. I know a lot of times I, I'll, I've listened to you speak a few times and your ability to help people find the belief in themselves is so powerful. They might, they might have the stories, right? We all have the stories. We have the experiences, but we don't believe that they're valuable enough in the marketplace. So we don't believe they're valuable enough to bring them to the marketplace as an offer, as a product or service. Talk to those people out there that are struggling a little bit about the self-doubt that's going on in their mind, uh, telling them they can't, they shouldn't try to move them forward. Everyone needs someone to believe in them. And everybody, you do, I do, everybody does. And if you don't have someone to believe in you, that's your biggest problem. You need someone who believes in you and, and sees you for who you are. That's my job description. I'm a professional believer in people. <laughs> that's what I do. I get paid to believe in people and help them believe in themselves as a result of that. So if you don't believe in yourself now, find someone who loves you, find someone who knows how great you are and can reflect it to you. And if you can't easily get that, then hire yourself a great coach who loves and believes in people. Someone like me. Love that too. So let's go a little bit into the thought leader revolution, the podcast that you have right now and the content that you're putting out there, trying to help people be inspired, get inspired, right? To take their knowledge and bring it to, to the marketplace and products and service, trying to help it serve as many people as we possibly can. Talk a little bit about your podcast and the message that you're out there trying to provide for people through it. So the Thought Leader Revolution podcast is about helping people who are in the kind of profession that you and I are in, which is using our expertise to assist people, learn how to position themselves as the go-to authority or thought leader in their space. And what we've done is we've interviewed some of the world's best known, and in some cases not best known in a mass way, but professionally famous authorities and thought leaders. And we asked them how they did it. Bottom line. And they share their wisdom with people. So if you're in the business of making money because of your expertise, your intellectual property, it's a great podcast for you to listen to because you'll get all kinds of free advice from really brilliant people on how you can do the same thing. So I advise anyone listening to this who's an entrepreneur, who is an authority, makes money with their expertise, you should subscribe to the Thought Leader Revolution. It's probably the best podcast for you to listen to and have uh, in your rotation. And I will attest to that. I've been following it now for since I've been introduced to you. And yes, the content on there has been fantastic. The guests that you have on there are also very good. So the amount of wisdom gained from different areas of life, right? So everybody comes to, to it with a different story. Yep. But at the same time, they're all, right? The idea of delivering those products and services to, to the marketplace is similar, but the stories are different. So it just makes it very intriguing. And obviously you're a, very, you're a great host. You've done it so many times now. Be able to show up, add value ton of energy. It's a, it's a great, great podcast. Thank you.
Yes, absolutely. So let's dive in then to the to the eCircle Academy. Let's go into the training and teaching that you have, the programs that you are actually helping people with as far as taking their knowledge and their wisdom and then bringing it out there and serving other people in a large, massive way. Talk a little bit about that. Thanks. So there's three uh, main programs that we offer right now. So the first one is called Get Booked and Get Paid. And it is a two-day workshop that teaches you how to get on podcasts as a guest and use that appearance as a way to get paid, to generate leads, generate sales opportunities, generate sales, generate business. Most people who go on shows go on shows with a what I call a weak intention. Their intention is to, how can I put it, to get visibility. I don't think that's a, a strong intention. That's a weak intention. Okay. Imagine you're a middle-aged man and you want to make love to your wife. And if you have a weak intention in your lovemaking, you're not going to be able to do it. If you have a strong intention in your lovemaking, your wife's going to be happy and you're going to be happy, right? So you need a, a strong intention. Your intention to go on the show has to be threefold. So number one, you got to have an intention. I'm going to go out there and, and, and create leads and sales. That's got to be there. And I have what I call that macro intention, but then I have a triple intention underneath that. Intention number one, I want to inspire the audience with my energy, with my passion, with my power. People are hurting right now, and they need people with positive mental attitude to inspire them. So that's what I want to do on every show. Intention number two, I want to help you, the host, look good. Man, you've spent time, energy, money checking me out, putting this podcast together. It's costing you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to put this show together. I'd better do a good job for you. I'd better make you feel, man, it was great having that dude on my show. He made me look good. My audience thinks I got a valuable show. That's my second intention. And then my final intention is you're a businessman. I'm a businessman. I'm a Gen Xer. I'm old school. I believe in doing business with people I know, like, and trust. What is the best way to know, like, and trust someone? Talk to them. What's a podcast guest appearance? It's a chance for you and I to talk together. At the end of this show, I'm going to like you. You're going to like me. That's how it works. You're going to get to know me. I'm going to get to know you. That's how it works. From coming on shows, I've built relationships with hosts, which so many people neglect to do. These relationships have resulted in us doing business with each other. They've resulted in partnerships. They've resulted in speaking opportunities. In 23 months, I've generated over $380,000 in sales part-time with this one strategy. And I want to teach this to people. Nobody else teaches this. I'm the only person in the world. I'm one of one teaching this. So I think that everyone in business needs to learn how to go on a show, get booked, and get paid. Everyone needs that. Nobody needs to learn how to go get visibility. That's, that's just going to happen by you showing up on a show. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, as we talked about before, there's a lot of people in business with amazing morals and ethics. But zero, zero sales skills and abilities. They lose out on business that they should get. There's people who need their help that aren't being helped by them. Why? Because they were unable to have the conversation in a way that felt good to them to ask that person to work with them. That hurts them. They lose the business. It hurts the client because they don't get helped and they still have the problem. And then some charlatan marketer is going to come in and scoop up that business and they're not going to deliver because they don't care. So this person loses faith in humanity. Even the charlatan marketer gets hurt because, you know, what goes around comes around. So I teach good people, no kidding, how to sell in a heart-driven way, but how to sell. Like this is very important. People need to learn how to sell. They need to learn how to go on calls and get business. They need to learn how to have a conversation with somebody who could use their help and ask them to work with them and, and collect a credit card or a check. Super, super, super important, right? So we have a, a 90 day, what we call 90K in 90 days. It's a, a sales accountability training program. This program is super valuable, super valuable.
If you're a businessman, a businesswoman, you're not making money, you need to come be a part of this program. And then our third program, we do it four times a year, is a three-day immersive experience. It's called the Branded Thought Leader Immersion Workshop, where over three days, we make a couple of decades worth of progress for you. And we help you get to the point where you get your thought leadership, your message dialed in so that you'll become professionally famous by the people who need to know you. And most people in our space, their messaging sucks. Sucks is a technical term, Randy. Sucks. <laughs> so we show them how not to suck at messaging. <laughs> I love the technical term. Yeah, that's, I don't, yeah, I don't even know where I want to take that one, but that's funny. I love that. Thanks, brother. So is the sales training you mentioned, is that an evergreen product? Meaning is it something you can join at any yeah. time or is it something anytime. that's just anytime? Yeah. Online based? Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very good. It's great. Fantastic. So let's dive into a little bit about the your book, The Finish Line Thinking, and how important that is that comes along with everything we've been talking about so far today. Well, this is the second edition of the book. And this book, I wrote it because I, I had the privilege of working with a number of Olympic champions, world record holders, and I noticed that they think differently than everybody else. You know, there's a difference between how a champion thinks and how it also ran things, right? And um, out of working with these folks for a good decade, I, I learned about the principles of a finish line thinker. So there's 13 of them. I'll quickly read them to you. So number one is finish line thinkers embrace healthy eating as a lifestyle. They embrace daily exercise as a lifestyle. That just makes sense, right? The top performers in life realize that their body and mind need to be in great shape, so they make sure it is. They expect to win. Their intention's strong. They don't expect to lose or to, to not lose. A lot of people play to lose. Winners play to win. Fourth, they actively surround themselves with the support they need to win. And that's what you need to do, right? Fifth, they become part of a community of supported like-minded peers because they know that you don't do anything alone. Sixth, they set big goals. Not wimpy goals, but big goals. Seventh, they embrace failure and they fail fast because failure is part of the succeeding process. And you need to understand that. Eight, they get the best coach, not just a great coach. And there's a story in the book of how that is. And I recommend you get the book and you read the story. It's a great story. But you want the very best coach. That makes a massive difference. And eight, they got, I mean, nine, sorry, they got the heart of a champion. So they keep going for it. Ten, you're either addicted or you're committed. I suggest you commit. 11, seek to be held accountable. All champion finish line thinkers seek to be held accountable. They know that's what it takes to win. 12, embrace mastery. You got to be willing to suck at something before you're mediocre at it, before you're average, before you're good, before you're great, before you're the best that ever was. And 13, you got to take on daily disciplines. And one of the major daily disciplines we recommend, daily exercise and healthy eating, daily success rituals, daily de-stressing, daily accountability, daily commitments. And that, my friend, in a nutshell, is the message of Finish Line. Thinking. Love that. So we'll have a, sh a link in the show notes to get people access to that book. That will be super powerful to folks. So let's talk about the, the one that really intrigued me is towards the end there about the mastery piece. That's something that I've been discussing a little bit on the podcast here lately is the having the discipline to show up and get your reps in. Do your reps. Do and like you said, suck at something for a while. I love that, that technical term of sucking at something for a while. <laughs> you don't want to do it forever. But at the same time, though, you want to get your reps in to be able to, to improve, right? Instead of fearing the failure, right? Embracing the failure as an opportunity to learn. Go into that one a little bit more as far as the mastery piece. I, I love that one. Well, last year I went on a journey. I used to be a fitness trainer myself, but when I got out of that field, uh, over about a dozen years, I gained over 50 pounds. So I, I looked at myself in the mirror. My gut was hanging out over my, uh, my belt. Didn't like it. And I made a decision that, no kidding, I was going to do something about it. So I found someone who had worked with people my age and gotten them not just fit, but in, on stage for competitions. I hired him. And that was a big decision because, you know, I used to tell myself, well, you used to be a fitness trainer, so you know what to do. And I, and I realized that, that I wasn't a fitness trainer anymore, so I needed somebody. And the other decision I made, I was going to do whatever he told me to do. 
and I did. And in six months, I dropped 58 pounds. I went from 227 to 169. Mm. Um, I sucked a lot of the way. The first four <laughs> months, I did not lose a lot of weight. I lost some weight, like 10, 12 pounds, but not a lot. But along the way, I stopped sucking. I got good at this. In the last two months, I just, I just dropped weight so fast. You know, it's like the bamboo tree. For 18 months, it, it grows three inches, and then in, in, in a week, it grows 18 feet. And that's doing the reps. So get the momentum, the momentum, the exponential growth. Yes, sir. It's nothing, nothing, nothing for so long. And then all of a sudden, it shows up, which is what you've always been wanting, but it just takes a while to see the fruits of that labor, which is super cool. You also talked about accountability and how important that is in terms of you know, achieving your goals. You said yourself that you were a fitness person, right? You were a trainer yourself, but to take it the next step further, you needed to find a coach, somebody yep. that would hold you accountable to your goals, to your mission of as far as dropping that weight for yourself. Go into that a little bit, how important that is. If you want to succeed at anything in life, you've got to embrace four qualities. Number one is you've got to be decisive and committed. You've got to make a decision that you're going to go after whatever it is you're going after, $100,000 more, a million dollars more, 50 pounds off, whatever. And then commit. You've got to, like I said, you've got to be willing to suck before you don't. And, but the third piece is super important. You've got to invest in yourself and be coachable. The most important asset you have is you. If you're in business, if you're an entrepreneur and you're not investing in you, you're an idiot. Straight up, you're an idiot. I've invested well over $300,000 in myself over the last decade. Okay. That's a lot of money. But it's paid off in spades, tenfold, fifteenfold. And everybody who is looking to get in business needs to make a decision to invest in themselves and be coachable. And then finally, you got to be resourceful because every business that invests in itself is going to have to find a way to come up with the time, energy, and money to make those changes happen. That's what's got to happen, right? So if you think about it, right, I had a horrible situation in my life. A little over a, a dozen years ago, my then wife seemingly out of the blue decided she didn't want to be with me anymore. I spiraled. I went from making robustly six figures to making no money, sleeping on my mother's couch. Wife kicked me out of the house. And I was feeling sorry for myself. A friend of mine felt sorry for me, and he bought me a ticket to a business conference. I put on my best suit, and I went with him. Saw a dude deliver a talk. Spoke to me. Ran up to the stage when he was done. Elbowed everybody out of the way and introduced myself and said, I'm Nikki Ballou and Here's my story. And at the end of telling him my story, I said, I think I need to hire you. He looked at me and he could tell that I was not in the greatest of shape. And he said, I got it. My minimum fee is $5,000 for five hours of my time. I require payment upfront in advance. I offer no guarantees and no refunds. Do you still want to work with me, son? Keep in mind, I've made no money <laughs> for 12 months sleeping on my mom's couch. And I told him, I, I don't have that kind of money. And he said, all right, I'll give you some free coaching. I said, free coaching sounds great to me. He said, it doesn't matter how much money you have. I said, hold up, hold up. But you want $5,000 from me. Of course it matters how much money I have. He said, son, I got 20 people lined up to work for me and 5,000 is my minimum fee. I charge a lot more than that. I don't need your, your money, but you need me. And I'm like, Oh my. Oh my. Okay. Go on. He said, it doesn't matter how much money you have. What matters is how bad do you want change? If your wife kicked you out of the house, you're sleeping on your mother's couch, you made no money for 12 months, you can't see your kids. How much longer are you going to put up with this sad state of affairs? A day? A week? A month? A year? A lifetime. When he said that last word, a lifetime, something popped in me. And I said, 
Give me a couple days. I'll come see you in two days. I'm in an appointment to go see him at his office. So I was a trainer, right? And I've been talking to some people about working with me, but my energy had shooed them away from me. I called them up with a lot of intensity and I said, hey, I got good news. You need me to help you lose weight or you're going to have a stroke. And I need the business or I won't be allowed to see my son. So here's the deal. I'm going to give you deal of the century, half price on the last price I quoted you. But there is a catch. If you say yes or no now, you pay me now, or this deal disappears. Two guys said yes. They gave me a thousand bucks each. I had two grand. I was ecstatic over the moon. I went to see this guy and I threw $2,000 down on his desk. I was so pleased. He looked at me and said, that's great, son. But I said, five, not two. I was deflated. And then I asked him, Bill, his name was Bill. Bill, how many people have you told this story to? He said, over the years, probably 30 or 40. And I said, wow, that's a lot. He said, yep. I said, besides me, who else came back to you with any money? He said, oh, you're the very first. I'm like, what? Said, yeah, you're the very first. I said, well, then take my money. I'll sign a contract saying I'll pay you the rest within 30, 60 days, whatever the case may be. He agreed. And the rest is history. I paid him back a day early. And I made six figures in less than six months. How bad do you want change? That's my message to you, Randy, and to your listener. How bad do you want change? If you want change bad, it's time to act and invest time, energy, and money in you. And let's make that change come alive. Love that, man. Appreciate that story. So folks are out there today thinking, yeah, okay, I need to get Nikki on my team. I need to figure out more about, about the trainings, the programs, the book. All the great stuff. We've kind of mentioned a few websites for people to get to know you at. And as far as if, if you have any social handles out there, we talked about the podcast. Go over some of the things, the best places for people to reach out and connect with you to learn more about what you have to offer to help them, right? Become service to other people, people helping people. That's kind of the theme that I want the listeners to take from this episode today is that helping other people starts with, with focusing on the service, right? So anyways, where are the best places for people to reach and find out more about you, Nikki? To find out more about me, listen to my podcast, go to Amazon, buy my books, go watch me on some other people's podcasts or watch some clips. I'm easy to find. Nikki Ballou, there's only one Nikki Ballou in the world. I'm one of one. So, um, But if you're not in the find out stage, you're in the I need to get things done stage, then I invite you to get on my calendar. But only do that if you're like ready to make a decision to change your life. And for that, you go to ecircleacademy.com forward slash appointment. Fantastic. So folks, if you are ready to make that decision based on the conversation we've had today, this has been fantastic with the stories, with the inspiration, which is exactly what I thought was going to come from uh, inviting Nikki onto the show, which has been super great. So go out there and get on his calendar. He's inviting you to do that. And I would highly suggest that you take him up on that, but be ready. Be ready. He's going to challenge you. He's going to push you in ways that you probably never have been. But at the same time, he's going to be there and be supportive and be helpful and encouraging and try to build some of that belief in you. So that way you can go out and build the brand, build the business, build the life that you're looking for that you might not even really know that is even possible, that it even could be existent, but it is. And there's proof. So definitely do that. Follow him on his podcast as well. We'll have all the links in the show notes, uh, where to connect, where to find the podcast, where to find the program, and also the, the link to where you can jump on his calendar as well. So Nikki, man, I appreciate you jumping on the show here with me. This has been a fun conversation and I look forward to connecting again with you very soon. Randy, God bless you, brother. You're a great man. And it's always a pleasure to meet somebody who believes and wants to serve. And that is you. I appreciate that because that's what I'm trying to do here on the podcast. I appreciate the recognition for that. So thank you very much. So folks go out there, 
Have a fantastic day. As Nikki mentioned, that's what my goal is. I'm trying to provide to you as many fantastic guests as I possibly can bring on, right? The stories, at some point, something is going to really resonate with you. And it's really going to help you bridge that gap to where you are now to that dream life in the future. That's what happened to me. And that's why I'm so passionate about bringing the podcast. When I was early on in my journey, trying to discover who I was, what I wanted to do, podcast was my platform of choice. I learned so much from so many different people in a relatively short period of time that I know and I knew that that was exactly what I wanted to try to do with the Rich Mind platform and this podcast moving forward. So go out there, have a fantastic day. I look forward to bringing back the next guest again to you very soon. Until then, bye now. Thank you for joining me on the Rich Mind Podcast. And remember, your external world is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. So focus every day on that internal battle and win within. Until next time, my friends.